Uh, now remember that yesterday I told you that uh, essentially the first part of 9.4, day one is considered to be extra credit if you do it, and that is because it's stuff we've done before, should be able to do it without me going over it, which is why it'll be extra credit. Uh, and this is new stuff. So for those of you taking 150, uh, this will be uh, some stuff that you will um, see in 150. So, uh, and it's the further along you get, the more you use it. And it's a form of something called, you're solving equations using substitution. And what you're doing is that you're taking something which is not a quadratic equation, turning into something which is. And you know how to solve a quadratic. You can solve the quadratic, you can complete the square, you can use the square root property, you can uh, use a quadratic formula, you can factor it if it factors easily, uh, but no matter what quadratic formula always works, you can use a quadratic formula on it. So you take an equation which is not a quadratic and you turn it into something which is. So if I look at x to the fourth minus 10x squared plus 9 equals 0, it's not a quadratic. However, the key is this. If I take the center factor, the center variable part, namely x squared, and if I square that, this ends up being x to the fourth. So I can make a substitution. I can let u be x squared, and if I square u, on both sides, I get x to the fourth. And any place I have an x to the fourth, I can put a u squared. Any place I have an x squared, I put u. And I end up with an equation that looks like this guy, which actually factors. And I can solve him. Not so easy to do the original, but very easy to do the one that I've created using substitution. <coughs> if I look at this guy, and you've got, oh my goodness, you have these fractional powers. Well, if I look at the center, the center is x to the one-third. That says if I take x to the one-third and square it, I would actually get x to the two-thirds. So I make my substitution. I let u be equal to x to the one-third, then if I square both sides, x to the one-third squared, I get x to the two-thirds. So that says any place I have x to the two-thirds, you're going to put a u squared. Any place I have x to the one-third, I put a u, and that turns it into an equation. This is 5 plus 11 plus 2 equals 0. This should be a 5x, five 5u five squared plus 11u plus 2 equals 0. I now have something. This guy doesn't factor, or does he? Yes, he does. This guy factors, and so I can solve him. So it's substitution. Here's the key to any substitution. You go to the center term. If you square it and get the guy that's in front, you can do substitution on him. So that if I look at this particular problem here, And I'd say, here's x squared. If I take x squared and square it, do I get x to the fourth? The answer is yes. That means I can use substitution on him and turn him into a quadratic equation. So my substitution is always the center. And if I square u, 
I get x to the fourth. So looking at my original equation, wherever I have an x to the fourth, I replace it by u squared minus 13. Wherever I have an x squared, I replace it by u plus 36 equals zero. That's my new equation. Now that I can solve. I can factor it if it factors easily, or I can use a quadratic formula on it, which always works. This happens to factor, and most of ours will, by the way, into u and u, 9 and 4, minus, minus, so that u is 9, u is 4. But I'm not looking for u, I'm looking for x. By the way, if I'm in calculus, sometimes we leave everything in u because it makes life easier. Because you've now reduced the powers on the stuff that you're working with, and so it's smaller and easier to handle. Uh, for us, don't care. Now I want x, which means I need to go back to the original problem. And we say u itself is x squared. So now wherever I, it says that x squared equals 9, x squared equals 4. We now, have, now know how to solve that guy. How do I solve him? If x squared equals 9, what do I need to do? Take the square root of both sides. So that the square root of x squared is plus or minus the square root of 9. So x is plus or minus 3. Take the square root of both sides, so x squared is plus or minus the square root of 4, so x equals plus or minus 2. I have four answers. It's degree 4. The original problem is degree 4, so the most I would expect is 4, 4 or fewer. Now, the domain of the original problem is all real numbers. If you take a look at x to the fourth, there's no radicals. There's no denominator, so any numbers I come out with should work. You can check your answer, and you would go. Ch you would check your answer by going back to the original. Pro excuse me, original problem. I'm only going to do one of them, and we would say suppose x is equal to three. Is it true that three to the fourth minus thirteen times three squared plus thirty-six? Is that equal to 0? 3 to the 4th is 81. That much I know. Then I'm going to be doing uh, minus 13 times 9 plus 36, which is 81. 13 times 9 is minus 1. This is a 27. 9 and 2 is 11. 117 plus 36, and 81 plus 36 is 117 minus 117. 117 minus 117 is 0, and it checks. So you go back to the original problem to check it. Now, again, if it was dependent upon whether or not the uh, bridge was going to collapse, house would fall down, if I made a mistake uh, that I would lose lots of points on something, uh, I certainly would check my answers. Other than that, I don't care.